If you notice here, we're, we're, we're only going to cover two verses tonight. I intended to cover three, but uh, I, I think I'm just going to stick with two tonight. And just a powerful message that is presented to us in this whole chapter. I mean, this has been a ride for us here going through the book of Hebrews. And uh, it's one of my favorite books. And this has to be one of the most favorite chapters uh, in the New Testament for me. And uh, it says a mouthful. And if you could just grasp tonight just a little bit of what this passage teaches us about what we have in Christ, our faith. I mean, faith is a very powerful weapon. And he's trying to convince these Christians that are getting ready to turn their back on Christ the superiority of faith. He's trying to show them how important faith is. And uh, so let's read those two verses and we'll have a word of prayer. The Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. He gives us a definition or maybe a description of what New Testament faith is all about, but also what Old Testament faith was all about. And, you know, a lot of us, we've heard the word faith all of our lives. And, you know, if I were to ask you what faith is, I'm sure you could give me a good definition, a good biblical definition. And, you know, the word faith just has the idea of belief, believe. Uh, the idea of faith in the Bible is believe in God, you know, uh, having faith in the Lord. And they were beginning to forsake their faith in Christ and go back to the old religion. They were going to go back to the animal sacrifices. And we know that from past weeks of study. And we remember last week that he told them from the Old Testament that the just shall live by faith. And so now he's going to use that as a springboard to talk about how powerful faith is. And so here's the deal. Why? What's the big deal about Hebrews chapter 11? Why give us Hebrews chapter 11? Why does he give us chapter 11 at this point in time? Here's some reasons. Number one, to show the importance of faith. Faith is important. The Bible tells us that we are saved by grace through what? Faith. So faith has a lot to do with our salvation. There is no salvation apart from faith in Christ. And so he writes to them to encourage them about the importance of faith. Faith is a big deal. Don't turn your back on faith in Christ. But then he also wants to show them the power of faith. And I'm going to tell you, if you, I'm looking at most of you tonight. Most of you are seasoned Christians. And so I'm going to go ahead and assume that you have read Hebrews chapter 11 in one point in time of your life. I'm just sure of that. And you know what's coming. And he shows you all these great, amazing things that these people did who were just like you and me. They did powerful things. And it was all because of their faith. So faith is a powerful thing. So he, he writes to, to show them the power of faith, but then to show that faith has been the key to salvation all along. And that's, that's kind of a theme that we see woven in and out of the New Testament that, that really, you know, we got this idea, and I know he's talking about the New versus the Old and the Old Testament versus the New Testament and the sacrificial system versus the sacrifice of Christ and all those things that he's talked about in Hebrews. But really, to be honest with you, that... He's trying to show them as well that the Old Testament prophets, how they're in heaven to this day, is because of faith. That's not changed. From Genesis to Revelation, it's always been about faith. I want to give you a passage here. Hebrews chapter 11, a good parallel passage, is Romans chapter 4. When Paul is trying to describe what Abraham had and how Abraham was justified... And he tells them that he was justified by faith. And I, I want to read a, that excerpt to you. Romans chapter um, 4 and verses 1 through 3. He says, What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? He says, let's go to the word of God. Let's see if Abraham was justified by his good, being a good person and, and working. Let's see what God says about Abraham's salvation. He says, for what saith the scripture? Abraham, there it is, believed God. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. So the idea there is, he's telling them, and at the end of the chapter he makes the point very clear. He says, Abraham had faith. What made Abraham so great? 
His faith. He trusted God. He believed in God. This is a good parallel passage to look at when looking at uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Of course, Hebrews chapter 11 does have some things to say about Abraham as well. And so he's he's telling them the the greatness of faith. So he's showing them the importance. He's showing them the power of faith. He's showing them that it's been the key all along. But he's also trying to encourage them. Because remember, last week they were suffering persecution. They were facing attacks because they were... Christians. I mean, there were people in other parts of the world that were literally dying for their faith. And so they were, they were getting ready to be introduced to some major persecution. However, we learn in the Hebrews that they had not resisted unto blood. But they were beginning to turn around because they were beginning to get discouraged. They were beginning to be defeated. And so Hebrews chapter 11 also is a good chapter for encouragement because that's what he's doing. Hebrews chapter 11 is is for encouragement. He's trying to encourage them to continue through hardships as others have done that have gone on before them. Again, this chapter is filled with examples of individuals like you and I who faced hardships and passed the test and stayed strong. And so he's sharing with them all these aspects of how important faith is. The writer again is urging them not to turn their back and we've talked about that. He is showing them to let go of their faith in trying, or excuse me, he is showing them to let go of their faith in this, is trying, in this trying moment would be letting go of their most powerful weapon. And that truly is faith. Faith is a victory, just like we just sung. I like what Warren Wiersbe said. Now I want you to catch this. I want you to circle this if you have a pen. True Bible faith is confident obedience to God's Word in spite of circumstances and consequences. I like that. And that is what Hebrews chapter 11 is really teaching us. If you look at the circumstances and the trials of some of these individuals that are mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11, faith is all about confident obedience to God's Word in spite of circumstances and situations and consequences. This chapter tells us everything we would need to know about faith. It chronicles men and women just like you and me who just trusted in God's Word and did incredible things through faith. Again, faith is the key. I want you to understand we have this idea to lift up those in Scripture like Abraham and and Peter and James and John and and we think about Nehemiah and we think about all these great people that we hear preached about and and we study the Word of God and and see all the great things that Moses and Noah did. and Those are great things and I'm not trying to demean what they did but I think sometimes we forget that these individuals were just like you and me. They have the same faith that you and I have. If you've trusted Christ, you have the same faith that Noah had, that Abraham had, that Peter had, that John had. I mean, you look at the great accomplishments that that God used Abraham to do, that God used Moses to do, that God used Daniel to do, that God used all these great men and women that we've read about since our salvation. They have and possess the same faith that you and I have. And so what does that tell you and I? We're capable of the same things. We're capable to do great things, Brother Willie, for God. We're capable to to claim mountains in the name of God. We've got valleys in our life. We've got mountains in our life. Maybe there's things in our way. Maybe there's things tonight that we don't think we can conquer. Well, the Bible tells me of some individuals that had things that they faced, yet they conquered it by faith. They triumphed with faith. Again, as we sung tonight, faith is a victory. It is the victory. So tonight as we look at this, there's a few things I want us to share and then we're going to really kick into this next week in chapter 11. This is kind of an introduction to chapter 11. It's such a great passage and it's hard to preach that in one setting. So tonight we're just going to get this introduction and then next week we're going to get into some powerful stuff. We're going to show you exactly what faith can do in your life. I didn't say your neighbors, I'm talking about you tonight. What faith can do in your life. I want us to look at the definition of faith. The definition of faith. I feel tonight, if you look at this passage of Scripture, faith is defined by three words. Faith is defined by three words in this passage of Scripture. 
Now, I like what one guy said in my study. I was looking at it. He said, this is not what you would call an intellectual definition of faith. It's more of a practical definition of faith. And I don't know about you, but I'd much rather think about the practical anyway. What does the practical mean? It's where the rubber meets the road. This is the real deal when it comes to faith. I want us to look at this, first of all, in the definition of faith. Faith is defined by these three words. Number one, we have substance. Notice the Bible says that faith is the what? Substance of things hoped for. Of things hoped for. The word substance there, just literally it means a foundation or supporting structure. It's saying that faith is a foundation. Faith is the foundation. And we'll see that because the basis of faith or, yeah, the basis or foundation of faith begins actually with the creation of God, which we see in verse 3 of Hebrews chapter 11. And we'll talk about that a little more next week. But faith is the foundation of what we're headed to. It is because of my faith tonight that I have a hope in heaven. It is because of my faith tonight that I'm right with God. It is because of my faith tonight that I can get right with God. I can get forgiveness of my sin and be restored to a right relationship because of my faith. I'm going to be rewarded one day because of my faith. Faith is foundational. He's saying faith is a foundation. It's what holds up everything else in our lives. The fact that we're going to heaven. The fact that one day we'll stand before Him and reap the reward of, of serving Him in this life is all basis upon the foundation of faith in Christ. It is the foundation. You take faith away, you crumble the house. Without a proper foundation, a house will fall. Again, I think about people that, that say they've gotten saved and you never see evidence in their life. They're like a house without a foundation. It never truly stands. And many of you know people uh, in your past that have made decisions for Christ. But they walk out the door and you never see them come again. And you never see any fruit uh, from that decision. I would say that they never truly had a foundation. They never truly had faith in Christ. That's why he's saying here, faith is critical. Faith is the foundation. Again, it's the, the very foundation of the things hoped for. It gives us confident assurance that those things will come about. Tonight, why do I believe in heaven? Why do I know that if I close my eyes in this life tonight to never wake up again in this side, to wake up and be face to face with Jesus tonight? Because I have faith. I have faith in that confidence assurance tonight. The hope. The things hoped for, the word hope there, it's belief accompanied with expectation. Again, it's not the hope that you and I have come to know in our English language of, are you going to Walmart today? I hope so. It's not what he's talking about. When you see hope in the New Testament, it always is talking about a, a sureful expectation. It means it's a promise. It means it's going to happen. And the Bible says that faith is the foundation of all those things that we look forward to. Many of you tonight have lost loved ones. I've lost loved ones. I lost a precious grandmother several years ago. Loving woman. Great woman. I've lost a precious great grandmother that used to read the Bible to me. I'd get sick and my, my mom would send me over to her house and the very first thing she'd do in the morning, she'd crack that Bible open and she'd start reading me the Bible. Sweet woman. Loved the Lord with all her heart. She's passed away now. And I miss her. I miss my grandmother Ruby. I miss those folks. I know some of you right now, you're thinking of someone. I'm going to tell you, tonight we have a hope. And it's not a maybe so. Miss Peggy, I think about Brother Ray. We'll see him again. Faith. Because of my faith tonight, I'm going to see my brother again. Because of my faith tonight, I'm going to see those that have gone on. I'm going to see them again. But most of all, I'm going to see the face of Jesus because of my faith. It's foundational tonight. Again, faith is the key. Again, you see all the promises I've written down there. And, and you can look at that in, in your own spare time. But I like another meaning of this word, substance. 
It also has the idea of title deed. Faith surely is our title deed to heaven and other promises of God. What is the title deed? What is the substance? It is the Word of God. If your faith does not rest upon the Word of God, it is not biblical faith at all. It has, the, it has to rest upon what God says. Notice that true faith rests upon what God says. Actually, it means to believe God. So what are we saying? He's building up a point. He's going to show you all these great things that these people did by their faith. He's saying that they claimed the promises of God. He's saying that they took the title deed of faith and they claimed what God said as truth and they lived by it and they reaped the benefits. Tonight, I have a tangible, a ten, now, maybe not necessarily in my hands, but it is just as well as should be in my hands tonight. I have a title deed to heaven because I have faith in Christ. It's mine. Heaven is mine. Is heaven yours tonight? You know, we, we often think of heaven and we think about how far away it is and we think maybe, you know, it's a home we're going to one day. Nah, it's your home right now. You're holding a title deed because you have faith. Faith is a title deed of things hoped for. It is our title deed to heaven. So we, we see hubs, the, the word substance there. Trusting and relying upon the word of God. And we see that it's foundational. But then we see another word in verse 1 and that is evidence. Evidence. Notice there with me in verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. The word evidence there, it's a word that means proof that has been tested. The idea there is that this thing has been tested so much to the point that we know that it's true. And he's getting ready to make that case as he goes for the rest of the chapter naming off people who have took God to the test and see every time that God came out truth as truth. God's not a liar. They put God to the test. They trusted God's Word. They stood on God's Word. And today they reap the benefits. This is a proven and tried faith. Evidence of things not seen. The things that matter most to us as believers are never visible. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7 that we walk by faith and not by sight. Paul connects these two ideas of things hoped for and things not seen when he says there in Romans chapter 8, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? Faith tonight is not a leap in the dark. I've heard people describe faith like that. Well, you have faith, that's a leap in the dark. How do you know that's real? How do you know God's real? He, he kind of jumps in it and talk, starts talking about creation. We'll see that next week. But I don't know how in the world you can look at the creation of God and not believe in God. I had um, Sister Shelby's granddaughter come to me was it two weeks ago. And she, her question, she had a very legitimate question that all kids ask. You know, where did this world come from? Or where, where did God come from? Or how do we know that God exists? Or something of that nature. I can't remember. And she's, she's just asking the, the normal questions of a child. And I'm telling you, that's a hard question to answer. I said, well, first of all, I know he lives within my heart. But I began to talk about this world and I said, you know, we look at a painting and we see how beautiful a painting is and we see that, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a drawer. I never have been a drawer. I've never been a painter. Trust me. Uh, coloring in the lines was never my thing in school. I can tell you that. But I do know this. Sister Rosa, I can't take a bucket of paint and 
throw it on that plaster or whatever it is they're doing and some kind of $300,000 art come out. I can't get a guy sitting on a horse with a sword by throwing paint and splashing on it. I do know this, that a skilled man can go and he can intricately begin to sketch the painting and paint that painting and make it a masterpiece. I know tonight that there was a painter because there is a painting. That makes sense. I know tonight that Brother Robert Coggins, our builder, didn't walk over to this side of the church and take a bucket of nails and some two-by-fours and just... No. I know because there's a building on this side, there was a builder. The day as I was driving through and saw... I don't know where I was, but I was just looking at the beauty of creation, thinking about this sermon tonight. I was looking out in the pasture and see the horses grazing and the beauty of, the, of that animal in and of itself. See, creation determines. Just like the painting tells me there's a painter, just like the building tells me there's a builder, creation tells me there's a creator. It wasn't just bang and it was there. A guy told my dad one time that he believed in the Big Bang Theory. And my dad said, I do too. My dad, I caught, kind of caught myself by surprise. He said, yeah, God says, let there be light and bang, there was light. <laughs> and uh, I said, okay, you had me worried there, Dad. But, you know, I'm, tonight we're talking about the evidence. Faith is evidence. All around us is evidence of our faith. Evidence of genuine faith. Faith is evidence. Proof. That has been tested, but specifically being tested as we look down the rest of chapter 11. All these great and amazing things that these prophets and these men and women who were just like you and I that did great things. We saw how God blessed their lives. We saw how God delivered them. We saw now, and the Bible tells us here that now, especially if you get into chapter 12, that there's a great cloud of witnesses. They have gone on before. They have passed the test. May I tell you, faith is evidence tonight and faith Faith is proof that has been tested. We have all those that have gone on before, but not only just biblical examples, you all have examples of men and women of God who have paved the way in your life and you've seen faith is the victory. Faith is evidence tonight. There's another word that just helps us describe faith. And that word is witness. You say, preacher, I don't see witness in verse 1 or verse 2. Look at verse 2. For by it, talking about faith, the elders obtained a good report. Obtained a good report in the Greek is the word for witness. It's the same word if you see witness in Scripture. That phrase is the same word. The idea, again, the word uh, uh, obtained a good report, it means witness. It, it, is, it also can mean the word testimony. It's a, so basically he's talking about the testimony of these elders or these individuals that he's getting ready to mention and the many, many others that he has not uh, mentioned or will not mention. But all those that have gone on before, the elders that have died in the faith and the elders that have done great things in the faith, they have become witnesses of the power of of faith. They're examples tonight. And that's what he's doing. He's setting us up for next week. He's setting us up. He's saying, hey, these individuals have done it. These individuals have passed the test. These individuals displayed faith. And they faced the trials. And they faced the storms. And they faced life just like you're facing right now. And they have passed the tests. They displayed faith. Nothing special about them other than the fact that they displayed faith. Tonight, all God's trying to challenge you and I to do in our Christian walk day to day is display faith. Trust in Him. Believe His Word. So what is He saying here? He's saying, number one, really, the elders trusted God's Word. Again, faith is trusting God. How do we trust God? We believe God's Word. How many of you know promises of God tonight? Shout some promises of God to me tonight. Some 
Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Salvation is a promise. Somebody, get, somebody else give me a promise tonight. Never leave us nor forsake us. Who I saw something, heard something kind of different. Someone else. They all said the same thing. You guys are on the same, same wavelength. Must be that section over there. So he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And we tend to forget about the other part of that passage. You know what he's talking about there? Being content. He said, he'll never leave us. We can be content because he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Actually, we're going to be doing that in a couple weeks. Hebrews 13. That's a promise. I mean, we can go on and on and on and on and on tonight about the promises of God, the promise of heaven, the, the promise that one day we'll meet with our loved ones again, the promise we'll see Jesus face to face, the many, many promises of protection, the promises of, for, uh, of provision tonight, the promise of direction tonight, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, mind and soul. All those passages of Scripture that we can think about the promises of God. And, and, and even in the tough times, in the valley, the Bible tells us there in Psalms 23, that I'll fear no evil. We take God's Word and we trust it. And I know sometimes that's very hard to do. Ask Abraham tonight if it was hard. I don't, want to read, I don't want to preach anything. I'm going to preach in a couple weeks. But if you read, <laughs> Abraham was called by God and he didn't know where he was going. God says, Abraham, I need you to do. I'm going to make a nation of you. I'm going to do all these great things. But he didn't tell Abraham where he was going. But the thing that made Abraham great is that he trusted God and he went anyway. He just trusted God. God says, if you'll do this, I'll do this. And today there's a nation by the name of Israel. Abraham never saw that. He never saw Israel. But it's there. His faith has become real. Tonight, these individuals just trusted God. They ain't special. They just trusted God. And God tonight, He's encouraging these wayward Christians. He's encouraging Belvoir Church tonight. Just trust me. Trust my word. You, I don't think you're getting it just yet, but you will by the time you reach the end of chapter 11 what you and I are capable of in this sanctuary. We're capable of amazing things, great things, as long as we have faith. They trusted. These elders trusted God. But then these elders obeyed God. They didn't take the word of God and rip out pages. No, they obeyed it from every jot and tittle, every letter. They trusted God and they obeyed God. I know they weren't perfect. These individuals, I want you to understand, these individuals, if you look down some of these individuals, you'll find some of their lives to be kind of sketchy. But yet they're here in the hall of faith. God's not expecting perfection tonight. He knows you and I are not perfect. He just wants us, who are not perfect, to trust Him and to obey Him. Trust and obey, for there's no other way. It has a lot to do with faith. The elders trusted God's Word. They obeyed God's Word. But then lastly, they proved God's Word. We'll look at these individuals in the weeks to come. Noah, you're building a boat. And you're saying this huge flood is going to come on. You're saying that God said that we got to get right with Him and we got to load up on that thing. And if we don't, we're going to die in a, and we're going to drown. No, come on, Noah. Matter of fact, there's ample scripture evidence possibly that it had not even rained at that point. So for Noah to go around and say that rain was coming, that drops of water were going to fall from the sky, and that the whole place was going to be covered in water was ludicrous. I mean, he was just trying to tell people what God said. Noah, are you crazy? But the Bible tells us that even though Noah was in the minority, he only saved his family. It's a very sad story on one side of that coin. That of the whole world, only his family walked in that boat. 
But as Noah walked in that boat and God shut that door and the floods came, and that, 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 that door swung open after those days of the flood and the flood had receded, Noah proved, Noah proved God's word was true. His faith, faith proved God's word. So again tonight, these elders trusted God, they obeyed God, and they proved God's word. These individuals stopped the mouths of lions. These individuals were rescued, as we just talked about, from floods. They faced certain death. They faced certain calamities. These individuals... We're placed in valleys just like you and I. But they won. They succeeded because they had faith. Faith is the key. Faith tonight. God wants to do something great in your life. You know what? I believe there's a lot of things that we miss out on just because we don't have the faith that God wants us to have. You say, preacher, I'm going through something tonight. Just like these Christians, they were going through a tough time. Granted, they were being persecuted for their faith. The message in Hebrews 11 is, have faith. Look at what these individuals did with their faith. They did great, amazing, powerful things. Some of which changed and transformed an entire nation by their single faith. You try to tell me faith is not powerful. Faith is the most powerful weapon that we have. Preacher, I can't do this. We can't do that. Where's your faith? Preacher, I don't know about all this building going on. Where's your faith? God wants us to win. God wants to show Belvoir great things. I'm confident. You believe that tonight? God wants to show us amazing things. God wants to show us some things that will drop our jaw. I believe that tonight. I believe in this church. But we cannot go forward without faith. May God give you and me, especially me as your leader, and our leadership and, and you all, the faith that we need to do God's work here at Pitt County. And by that faith, I want you to do me a favor tonight. Go home, read the rest of chapter 11 and see. And you're going to see it in the next couple weeks. And see just how powerful faith is. I better not hear. We can't do that. My God's big. How about yours? With every head bowed and every eye closed tonight. Faith is a victory. Faith is a key.